Okay, so uh, if if we look at on the right side of our screen that modeling toolkit tab there, uh, we've dealt with some of these tools. Um, you know, we learned about booleans and stuff. We learned about extrude and bridge, right, the other day. But we never really got around to bevel and add divisions. So the first one I want to do is add divisions because it's very simple. All we want to do is uh, grab, you know, right click and, and face, go to face mode there. And we're going to select a face, okay? We'll hit add divisions on the right side of our screen. And you'll notice a window appears, kind of like in Fusion, how you had a command window. Right, and you input things on it. Uh, so, if you uh, type in different numbers in here, you're going to divide uh, the surfaces by different amounts. Right. So this is adding subdivisions. Right. But why did it go from uh, one dividing it to four to two dividing it into sixteen? Well, what happened was uh, when we add one subdivision, we divide this with one edge in the middle this way and one edge in the middle this way. When we divide it two times, we divide all those surfaces with one edge in the middle and one each. So that makes 16, right? So that's how you get, um, that's how you can just simply add these. Also, uh, not a big difference in my eyes of using just the smooth uh, subdivide tool there. Um, I guess, I guess it, it works in slightly a different way. Um, let me try it on on here. No, it, it's about the same to me. Um, maybe you have more scalability options or whatnot. Okay, so that was the add divisions tool over here. Um, yeah. So that's add divisions. Uh, the next tool is bevel. Okay. So bevel, you're going to need a hard edged object. That's why I suggested a, a cylinder. So in this one, you'll need to be in edge mode, right? And so in edge mode, um, when you have objects that have a loop around them, you can double click on an edge to quickly select the entire loop, right? So I, I've messed my cylinder up enough where it's not selecting the entire loop. Um, Regardless, I'm going to make it work whether it wants to or not. So make sure you have a whole edge loop selected or on your if you're doing a cube, make sure the whole all four sides are selected. We're going to go to bevel and press that button. Okay? And it it immediately does what we would call a chamfer, okay? That's a straight edged uh, inclination that uh, changes the the edge there. We would call that chamfer and anything else. That's because in this bevel command, we only have one segment that we're we're only chopping it by one segment. If we add such uh, two, maybe it's going to start to look more round. This corner is going to start to add more segments, look more round. You know, four segments, a lot more round, right? Remember, we're always fudging it with polygon meshes, always. So the more segments you add, the smoother the result, yet uh, the higher the polygon count and the higher the weight. Now the fraction there, that's going to change how much, uh, uh, like the radius of the uh, kind of smoothing on the edge there. So a higher number equals a larger, you know, cap or uh, bevel on the edge. So, you know, you can keep going. Uh, it'll start to look like a dome if you add a larger fraction on there, right? So uh, really the ones I mess with, fraction determines the radius of the curvature on the bevel. Okay, so bevel was found over here, <laughs> components. The fraction controls the radius and the segments control basically the smoothness or how many times it gets chopped, right? It can be pretty goofy uh, um, if it doesn't have enough of them. So there's also um, the option of um, not chamfering it, which you, you can try that out and see what it means, but basically it won't round it even though uh, I, it's just chopping the edges, I believe. Don't really know the purpose for that per se. Maybe if you wanted to quickly chop the edge 
and uh, do something where you, um, I don't know, like extruded this outwards or uh, change something about it. Uh, maybe if you go inwards, something like that. Don't know. But um, <laughs> yeah, bevel is important because most objects in life uh, do not have a perfect edge. They don't have a perfectly 90 degree edge, right? They have some rounding. If you look at the edge of your computer monitor, there's rounding on the edges of the plastic because it came out of an injection mold. If you look at the edge of your desk, there's rounding on the edge of the wood because, well, it's wood. It's not perfect 90 degrees. The few things that might be perfect 90 degrees would be like, uh, you know, machined blocks or something like that, or uh, the edges of glass or uh, a diamond or something like that. Uh, then you'd have real true harsh angles. But for most of the stuff that you model, you're really going to add to the realism if you just hit it with a bevel. You won't see it per se as something that sticks out in the render, but it'll be there and it'll be perceptible and, and just barely noticeable by the eye um, as slightly more realistic than if you had not 